Welcome back to another weekly market recap with Matt at Trading Your Job. Thanks for joining as we just casually review the week that was and look forward to the week ahead. One of the things impacted by rising interest rate is the federal debt servicing. That's because when old debt matures, they have to take out new debt and it's at a higher interest rate. And so the cost of debt servicing is just skyrocketing right now, as you can see on the graph here. Starting off here with the VIX on the daily time frame, you can see that it had some volatility to start the week, and the VIX got outside of the Bollinger Band on the daily time frame, and then throughout the week it kind of reduced even though there was continued sell-off. Switching over to the SPY on the 15-minute time frame, just looking at some shorter time frames, lots of gaps here in the chart, so there's chances are that the gaps get filled, and not for sure that that's going to happen right away this week, but since there's so many, there's probably some upside potential. Same thing on the queues, got a few gaps in the chart here on the 15 minute time frame. Could see uh, some rallies. On the IWM, same thing on the 15 minute time frame, big gap up in the 192 and a half area. Also down in the 188, might have to fill those. VNQ, Vanguard Real Estate, this one also gaps galore. Finally, Biotech, which had a really strong week last week had a lot of selling off this week. If you're looking for something to maybe buy for some upside potential, Biotech was pretty strong leading up to this. It's oversold on the daily time frame as well. Probably start picking up some shares here for a swing trade at some point. Switching over to bonds on the 15 minute time frame, there was a lot of volatility as well here because yields increased. You can see that AGG has a lot of open gaps. Gap down pretty big on Monday to start the week and then kind of bounced around sideways. Mortgage rates got a lot worse during the week so you can see that reflected in the bond chart here same thing on TLT on the 15 minute time frame big gap down to start the week kind of rallied and closed this gap during cash hours and then chopped around sideways HYG did a better job of closing the gaps that it had in the chart still choppy price action same thing on J&K choppy price action big gap down to start the week and then some intraday rallies and gaps in price overnight. FLOT iShares floating rate bond continued its upward march. I've talked about FLOT a few times and I realized I hadn't really looked into what the goal is. So I pulled up the FLOT website on the iShares uh, site here. Ex exposure to U.S. floating rate bonds whose interest payments adjust to reflect changes in interest rates, which is why as interest rates rise, this has been really matching that rise. 300 plus short-term investment grades bond in a single fund. So since those three-month yields are so high you know between one month and five years that's what they're buying and they're managing interest rate risk in terms of total cumulative returns since inception you know 15 percent in a bond fund so pretty crazy performance overall looks like it distributes at least monthly had some weird overlap here in December. As far as the fun facts it started in 2011 the tip I shares bond ETF gap down gap up gap down, just some really choppy price action and overnight, big overnight moves. Looking at oil on the 15 minute time frame, there was a gap last Friday and we haven't really reclaimed that price action during cash hours to see what it would have done if there was no gap. So it's still got a gap to fill on the 68.50 area. Just kind of moved around sideways all week. Natural gas finally caught a bid toward the end of the week. These aren't really three white soldiers as that chart pattern's called, which is a bullish reversal. But other times where there's been a small uptrend like that off of oversold conditions, we've reached at least the middle Bollinger Band, sometimes the upper Bollinger Band. So might have a little bit more room to run on this one, but it was, you know, in a slope of hope. We haven't necessarily broken out of that and we're not necessarily in a breakout. Gold on the two hour time frame, price action broke down even further from that rally point. I did call this out a few weeks ago that it looks like it was stalling out up in this area and that did end up happening. Zooming out a little further on the daily time frame on gold, still a gap down here in the 160 range so it's possible we come down and fill that before resuming or we might catch a bid here and come up and close the gap up above at 176 178 and then continue lower copper had a sell off this week down again under four dollars a share copper is a leading indicator for the economy because it's a key material in building and things like that so it's called dr copper for that reason lumber had a short rally just kind of basing here 
which is the daily chart on Bitcoin. Last weekend, I called out that we were on the lower Bollinger Band and might be in for a rally. And then that did happen. And then last week I said, might be a good place to take profits since it's 10% up. And that did seem to be true. So if you're trading these things, make sure that you take profits occasionally and then look for good entry points. We're not quite oversold on the daily time frame again, but we have reached the middle Bollinger Band, which is a place that sometimes it finds support. Looking over at Ethereum on the daily time frame, same thing happened. We went from lower Bollinger Band to upper Bollinger Band, and now we're right back in the middle. So a little more neutral in terms of that strategy. MACD kind of neutral, neutral on relative strength index and channel to commodity index midway on the slow stochastics. So no real clear you know, buy or sell signal here if you're a long-term holder. Obviously, this probably doesn't matter to you, but if you're trading it, it'd look for a more clear setup. Looking forward to the trading economics calendar for the week ahead, an important item on Monday morning, pre-market, that's the durable goods orders month over month. That's actually a three-star impact. You can tell that because it's maroon here. All these other ones that are just the time, those are considered two-star impact. So again, on Wednesday, another ISM manufacturing, that's it during market hours Wednesday morning. And then finally on Friday, ISM non-manufacturing Friday morning during market hours. So those are the three star events, three three star events on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then some Fed speakers throughout the week. Be interesting to hear what they say if they come out and are more hawkish because inflation was a little higher again last week. The key readings that they go by, the PCE. That's all I've got for you this week. Thanks for joining me on this brief recap. I'm just trying to keep them easily digestible for the weekend as we just do a high-level overview. I appreciate it if you subscribe, like, comment, share with your friends. See you next time.